Yo, 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 what is up, YouTube? Playing some Pele today. Oh, we're against Branster. No way, dude. <laughs> I actually know this guy. He's a buddy of my buddy, Habana. Um, long story short, I'm in a Joust League, a draft Joust League, and my teammate's name is Habana, and that's a buddy of my teammate. So, and we're against him right now. And he's probably going to be petrified of us, terrified of us, even. I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't want to assume, to be honest, because. Sometimes I assume that certain players that like know me will play a little bit more scared, but then they just dash on me in the first wave. So, you know, don't want to make any assumptions. We'll see. I'm going to start with the wing shard, of course, because a golden shard is not really necessary on Pele, but also kind of been nerfed like a thousand times. So I think I'm good on that. I think I'm going to go blink and beads against a Ryzen. I actually don't like this matchup at all. Uh, it's Pele favored. Pele wins it, but it's just, I just hate going against Ryzen no matter what. Be honest with you guys character is super super lame we're starting tier two Jotuns. i think we are probably going to go at transcendence we're just not starting it right, we're going to start um yeah he's like pushing up on me okay remember how i said that sometimes like players that i think would be scared of me just run at me yeah i remember that good times when we talked about that it does have an Aegis, so I don't really want to get too baited by that, but at the same time, I want to fight. Alright, that wasn't too bad. It could have been worse. Could have been better, could have been worse. I probably should have popped my Wing Shard on the first wave. This is my first game of the day, so I'm a little bit not locked in, to say the least. I should have popped my Wing Shard because it's just not, like, that useful. I mean, it is useful, but what I was getting at is like, it's not, it's not like a crazy OP relic, right? And it's only, um, it's only a 90 second cooldown now that they changed it, right? So probably should have just used it. In fact, I'm going to pop it right now just for, just for clear here, clear's sake. Um, did I really want to, I'm going to back like this so I can get the credit for that minion and then I can buy my Yodens. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. I do think this is like mostly the correct start for like most assassins and probably even certain warriors and stuff like the Jotuns. I just go transcendence on some gods that I feel like either need the mana or I just really like the mana on. Like Gilgamesh for example, I like I just love to have a bunch of mana on him. So I, lo I like to start the trans because I don't think the trans start is bad by any means. I think the trans start is good, but certain gods just don't need the mana as much, at least not early game. You know, like maybe you want it later, but I think Transcendence is a really, really good item for mana and for damage, right? But if I'm not getting a good value out of the mana, then, and I'm only getting value out of the damage, then I typically build it later in the game, uh, which is what we're going to be doing this game. I kind of want him to think he's safe to go to that rock, so we can hopefully get a cheeky kill on him. Now, if he plays his, um... Probably should have... I'm not going to risk it. I probably should have ulted him initially. I didn't think he would take that much damage. Okay, he's not. He's not contesting this. I was going to say, it's very smart for him to not contest that because my ult would absolutely destroy him. And then what do you know? He, like, comes up. He wasn't contesting the rock. He was just trying to clear the wave, to be fair, but... Still, like, pushing up, you should have just backed, bro. Or at least, like, hit under your tower and waited. No reason for you to be doing that. Um, second item here. Probably just gonna go straight into a serrated. Why not? Why not? We'll go straight into a serrated. He's definitely gonna go into defense second item, so the serrated's gonna be a lot of value. Also, movement speed early and uh, lifesteal. And other options, I could have went. I could have went defense second, although I don't need it, so I'm not going to. But I could have went defense second. I could have, um... I could have went Hydra's second, although I'll be honest, like, I don't think Hydra's second item is, like, terrible, or, like, early game is terrible, but I don't think it's, like, super value either, like, it's, it's meh, you know what I mean, like, it's good enough to build, like, if you really need the mana, if you need mana, you can get the Hydra's early, but, like, then there's the argument of, if you need mana, maybe you should just be, maybe you should just be, uh, what's it called, a thingy, building transcendence, you know? But it is a little bit of both, uh, our best of both worlds kind of thing, where it's like, you need a little bit of mana, but not too much, so you go Jotuns into Hydras. I'm probably just going to go, um, I'm just going to go Hydras, like, fourth or something, I don't know. 
We might not even get to the point where we build Transcendence, by the way. That's more of a late game thing. Um, and we might just snowball this. It's kind of like the point of this build, right? Is to like do really well early game and whatnot. So we might not even get to the Transcendence, but just keep in mind, I probably would, probably, 90% of the time, probably get a late game Transcendence. It depends. I don't know why he didn't turn around to like fear me there. It's super weird. Super weird. It's funny that I'm against Branster because I was literally just watching uh, this guy's stream who plays Joust named Koshoa. I was just watching his stream and he went against this guy in Joust. Like, and I don't even think this was like the immediate queue. I could be wrong, but like, I don't even think this was the next queue after that. Meaning like directly after that game, he queued up duel. I'm pretty sure this was like the queue after that. So it was like two queues later after his uh, Joust game and I get him. <laughs> Interestingly enough, I don't know why this dude's stepping up to me. Like, I have a full serrated man. But the blink on him. <laughs> and that's the surrender. Yep. <clears throat> I have a very good feeling. No, don't get me wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'll have some really competitive games. Maybe I'll even lose, dude. Maybe I'll even get, get absolutely destroyed. But I have a pretty decent feeling that a lot of these games, this video is going to be a bunch of surrenders. Uh, they might not all be like five minute or eight minute surrenders, but I have a decent feeling they're all going to be surrenders. We shall see though. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I would love to be proved wrong and see some competitive duel games. I will go ahead and skip you guys into the next game. Thank you so much for watching. All right, guys, we're off into the next game, the second game. Ma wait, Mousy Mass. Mousy Mass, okay. All right, it should be an interesting one. Interesting matchup, to say the least. Um, I think Pele wins this, but I'll be honest. I'm gonna keep it, a, keep it a buck with you guys. I don't actually know. Like, I actually don't know who wins this matchup. Um, but if I had to guess, I would say Pele does. Pele probably has a better early game and a better mid game and can still win the late game, but late game's got to be a lot more sketchy for sure. Late game is when I think Ama has the best chance to win this matchup. And maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe she just gets the vital amplifier in the mid game and then just starts owning us. You know, that's very possible. Uh, that, that could happen. But like, like I said, I mean, that's why I kind of, because I don't like to speak out of my butt, right? That's why I tell you guys. Uh, I've never really seen this matchup played by competitive players. I've seen it played. But usually one of the players is, you know, kind of bad, right? Uh, and I have no idea how good or bad this guy is. But anyways, what I'm trying to say here is I am unfamiliar with this matchup, to say the least. But if I had to take a guess, I would say that good old play wins. We did get the horrific this time because we're against like a melee character that is going to box us. We mainly wanted the blink last game because we were against a mage. Is he going to do the cringe invade strategy? Where he comes in late and tries to steal it after we use our abilities. It looks like he's not, which is good for us. We love to get the red buff, baby. We just want to clear this wave as fast as possible and then beat this guy up is the goal here. Does he not have his dash? Or did he just like recently use it or what? Because I would have been okay with him dashing that to a certain degree. I would have still got a lot of pressure off of it. I wasted my health pot a little bit. Wait, oh yeah, he started my blue, didn't he? That, like, just hit me. Dual players are weirdos. Definitely some strange guys, you know what I mean? Like, they do be coming up with some interesting strategies, to say the least. I want to just ult him for pressure on this buff, but like, he should be able to out secure me. Ah, oh, dang. Like I said, he should be able to out secure me, but I was going to give it a shot anyways, because he might mess up. He should just ult me, I think, honestly. I'm kind of surprised that he's not ulting me. I don't think I would die, but I would def, it would be close. Like, I would definitely get really low. Ah, uh, dang. Lucky. We shouldn't have forced that as hard as we did. That yeah, looks like you wanted to try to ult me there, so we speed away. We can afford a health chalice. 
which is great. I'm just going to get one mana potion. Why not? To sustain myself a little bit. Looks like he's going to get the pressure on the, uh, the meteor as well. I'm not good, honestly. I'm kind of losing a lot of pressure in this early game, but pressure that I thought I could have. And I, I think I could have had it. Okay, he's not on this. I think I could have had the pressure if I played it a little bit better. And to be fair, my start doesn't have much mana, so I kind of went oom really quickly. But still, I think I probably could have had pressure if I played it a little bit better. So, no big deal. But it is also the start. Like, this, this kind of start, if you don't get a kill early, then you kind of just run out of mana and it's over. But it's still a good start, I would say. He's not going... Okay, he went Golden Blade. That's interesting. That's actually really bad for him, I would say gonna help him with clear and stuff obviously but he's gonna need like a transcendence or like a dominant star or something of that nature to really like to really trade with me i think the one good thing about this golden blade though is it's obviously gonna give him a ton of movement speed i mean i could have ulted him there but he's just gonna dash immediately after right so it's like Okay, okay. <laughs> I'll be honest, I got kind of scared there. I was playing that one a little bit like a wuss, but um, we ended up there. I, I don't know, I was thinking about playing it like a wuss, I should say, but we decided to, we decided to use our better judgment. Or maybe my worst judgment. And uh, dive him there. Because he was like 1 HP kind of thing. Like I was just afraid of getting baited by the dash. That was the main thing. I didn't want him to dash and uh, me ult and miss my ult or something stupid like that, right? But So the moment he ulted, I realized that... Uh, well, the moment he let me get a knockup on him, for one, and then on top of that, on top of letting me get a knockup on him, I'm not even going to care about that blue buff. It's gone. There's nothing I can do about that. Um, but on top of letting me get a knockup on him, he then chose not to dash after and chose to ult, which means he can't dash because he's locked in his ult animation and we can ult him and then pick up the dual orb. If there was no dual orb in the game, you probably don't make that play, right? But since I can just kill him, pick up the orb, and then uh, do what I want. I'm glad that I didn't uh, commit for that rock. I mean, cause like uh, he didn't commit for it. Cause I was going, I was thinking about using my like wing shard and horrific on it, but no need. I'm just gonna ult them here and see what happens, honestly. <laughs> I'm actually just faster than her, man. What can I say? At least early game because uh, she doesn't have points. She doesn't have points into her uh her one right so whereas pele starts the game with like her full movement speed so it's but different for her be right back i mean don't get me wrong this guy is losing pretty hard like let's be real i'm 2-0 and and i've already got the tower at five minutes but it's still just like feels like a more competitive match than the previous one and maybe that's just like in my head though maybe it's just because i think ama is a competitive character and i'm biased kind of thing like i'm scared of ama is what i'm trying to say because realistically what's been competitive about this match so far nothing i mean he's kind of just running away and i guess he out secured me on the blue buffs like that's competitive i guess but it looks like we're just going to run straight to the uh good old bull demon here and call it a day he could contest this, but I think I would just end up ulting him. Yeah, he is coming. All right, so we're going to stop using our juice. We're going to pop a potion, and I'm going to try to ult him. Come here, please. Okay, pop our three. Get ready to two him. Oh my goodness, dude. And he cleared the wave, too, and he pushed the minions under tower. That sucks. The crazy thing is, is like... Oh, never mind. I was going to say I have a movement speed item and still can't catch him, but he does. He has the same movement speed item, so... Nope, so that's big of a deal. Guess I'm going to pop my mana potion because I kind of want to stay for this red buff here. Okay, I actually have no idea what that was, but sure. My ult comes up in 15. Now granted, 15 seconds can be kind of a long time. It just depends. We'll see. I was going to say hopefully he doesn't force the red in the meantime, but he looks like he is forcing the red. 
Yeah, I probably could have got that actually. Oh my god, it did. I feel like he could have just turned around and auto attacked me there, but he was too scared because he didn't know what I had. I was kind of too scared to run up on him too, to be honest, but I figured it'd be in a decent spot. Oh, as far as the second relic goes, I feel like this could make or break this matchup, which second relic we go. Because on one side, I could just go like thorns and then commit to like the full the full kill play and um yeah, and just and just horrific thorns and stand my ground. But then I don't have CC immunity for his ults. That basically forces me to ult in a particular way. Like I have to ult his ult is what I'm saying. Whereas if I go beads, I could just ult whenever I want to kind of thing and call it a day. And I think that's better because I think I want to be able to ult whenever I want to because I almost think that if we just fight normally, like with, you know, without ults, like we're both holding our ult and we fight normally, I think he'll win that. Pretty sure. Maybe I'm crazy. I don't know, but. We shall see. Maybe my knockup is enough. I don't know. Like, Amma's mitigations are insane. And he's running away from me. Very standard Amaterasu gameplay. Never fight, always PvE. Smile. I actually hate the noise of the, the three on the skin. It's kind of annoying. Like, that's just a random thought that popped into my head, but... All right, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go with my gut here and just go with what I think sounds the most correct and um, Being being able to have beads for his ult and then being able to use my ult however I need to in the fight just sounds better than going thorns to be honest Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's gonna go thorns and he's just gonna simply out trade me and we'll call it a day Who knows? We'll see All right, so he's got cooldown now, which is gonna make him that much harder to kill Bro's just gonna be zooming around the map. Oh my god, I actually hate going against Amaterasu's man. Like, just play the game, dude. Just play the game, please play the game. He said, I'll retreat. Yeah, we know you will, man. We know you. <laughs> you ain't gotta tell us you're gonna retreat, bro. We know. I do. I think a proximity ward's gonna come in clutch for both, like, running away and chasing, depending on the situation here. Uh, we do not have our ult, and he does have his ult, so we gotta keep that in mind. We don't wanna get caught. Like, I prefer to not have my beads burnt. Like, like, beadsing his ult when I'm not ulting him is not good, I think. Like, I want to use my beads when I'm trying to kill him kind of thing. I don't want to just use it as a defensive thing. I want to use it as an offensive tool. I mean, I think it is worth it, but part of me wonders why I even try to contest the buffs, to be honest, because, like, his, his secure is just so much better than mine. He is going to miss this entire minion wave being here. That is worth mentioning. He's missing that entire minion wave for contesting this. All right, his mirror is down. Seems like a good time to fight his any. I think he backed. I hope he backed. If he's like really smart, he could predict that I'm going on this rock and have started Bull Demon right after that. It's one of those plays that's like most people won't do because it's way too risky, but it is very possible that he did it. <laughs> Look at this right here.
Okay, so he didn't he didn't do what I thought he did, but he did back and immediately run straight to Bull Demon. Which of course he would. I mean he's Amaterasu. How else would they play the game but PvE, you know? I mean, that's their only play style. Everyone knows it. I mean, that's his wave clear. Like, yeah, he has Golden Blade, but still, it's a little bit awkward to not have. I really want to get this red buff. That's, like, my main concern. Dude, but the timing of this is so... Whack. Dude, he, he went Thorns! No, okay, I actually think he's just PvEing till he gets to the point of the game where, like I, like I said in the beginning, the point of the game where it's very debatable that uh, Ama just wins, to be honest, this matchup. He's like, I win the early and mid. Gonna go clear this wave, I think. My tower does come up soon, so I'm not too worried about it. Well, I am a little bit worried about it. Did I get his dash? Is that what just happened? He didn't even hit me with his ult. Like, I'm pretty sure I knocked up his dash. I didn't even realize it at first, to be honest with you, but I think that's what happened. But look, the Amaterasu got punished for PvEing. Maybe just play the game normal, man. Just play the game normal. Oh my goodness, dude. I don't know, I can't hate that much. I, I mean, I can, but... I will go ahead and say it. Yes, it is true that if I truly believe that Pele wins the mid game and the early game, then yes, the Yama should just PvE and run around and wait until the stage of the game that they can win. That is a smart, strategic decision to make. That is what they should do. However... That doesn't mean it's not annoying for me, and that doesn't mean I'm not allowed to complain about it, at least a little bit, right? So, But for the people in the back that are, you know, crying in the club right now, yes, I'll say it for you. Yes, he is PvEing, but there's not much else he can do, to be fair. Actually, did I want, do I want to go the late game? No, actually, I changed my mind. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna, I changed my mind. Because of the matchup that I'm in, and like the fact that I kind of have to like, um, chase this guy down like a lot i changed my mind on the late game transcendence um which granted i never said that like i would do it all the time i think i said 90 percent but um i don't know maybe, maybe i'm wrong about that uh, as i'm playing it out like playing and looking at the builds and you know trying things i feel like erendite gives me it's just more value like it gives more uh my cap cooldown also they changed erendite giving it movement speed just normally in the on the item and they nerfed the uh, effect on the ult a little bit and so, I don't know, maybe Erendite is simply just better than Transcendence on Pele these days, to be honest. You don't really need the mana, and don't get me wrong, Transcendence is a lot of damage, it is. Probably, definitely more damage than Erendite, but Erendite kind of allows you to get more damage off, I suppose, is the way I, I should word that. Alright, so we're just soft committing to the Titan, just poking it a little bit. No big deal. We probably could have poked a bit harder, but I don't want to get I don't want to get out poked before this red spawns is my main thing. Oh, it's funny. I want to be able to get this red buff. That's like my main goal right now. So he just horrific and thorns me for fun, I guess. Like, I don't really... And then he's just... It, I didn't even need to ult him. Like, I didn't even get to finish my errand. Ugh. These dual players, man. I, I, I'll never understand them. I truly will never understand it. PvE the entire game. Make one fight, one play to fight. F6. I don't know. Whatever. I'll skip you guys into the next game. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, again, maybe I'll like discover some more build ideas. Maybe I'll discover Transcendence is better in certain matchups versus others. Or maybe I'll discover that you just don't go Transcendence. I don't know. We're, we're, we're working the build out as we do it.
here live. Actually, I'm, I think I should skip this queue so I don't go against uh, Mousy Mass again. But I appreciate you guys watching. I'll skip you into the next game. Thank you. All right, guys, we're off into the third game. And what the? Bro, I swear I skipped a queue. And I'm against Mousy Mass again, dude. No way. Maybe he skipped a queue. I always wonder. I mean, more than likely, he just tried to skip a queue to avoid me and got me again because I tried to skip a queue to avoid him. But there is a small chance that bro just got like a priority queue. Like, it is possible that uh, it just, you know, hit him with the more time is needed to find you, find you a match. That is possible. Now, is it likely? No, but it is possible. All right, so we're going to wait to see if we can find him kind of thing, because he did invade my blue last game, right? So we're going to wait to see if we find him to level R2. I think we can win the... Actually, wait, now that I think about it, Alquan kind of has like a stupid OP level 3. Let's just let's just hope and pray that he didn't go horrific wing shard like I did, and we can just diff him, you know? Surely we can just diff him, right? Look at him. You know he was on his way to my blue buff already, bro. You know he was on his way to my blue buff. All right, he didn't get any mana potion, so I think I'm just going to contest this blue. And no, this is not the same thing as invading the cringe late invade, by the way, because he clearly knows that I'm here. Before minion spawn, before he's ever even on the buff. Okay, his mana sustain is actually really good, though. I didn't even think about that because he has Chronos Pendant. Nobody ever goes Chronos Pendant. Uh, start on Alklong, I should say. So I'm not really used to him having much mana. I'm used to him having like tier 2 Bancrofts or something of that nature. So this is kind of weird. Hmm. Let's just wait and see what happens. Maybe we should have just rushed the red buff in hindsight, knowing that he's doing this. I thought he was going to do the classic play of letting all the minions go in tower and then walk straight to the red buff. Like, people do that all the time. All right, so he might he might do it here. We'll see. I'm gonna pop my three, and I'm gonna pop my wing shard. So hopefully we can just burst this thing down. Pick it up, back, get our get our yones, heal up a bit, and then run to our blue buff before he gets to it. Assuming he's even doing it, he might not be doing it. Yeah, he's not doing it. So we are chilling. Right, so we don't want to miss any farm and lane like he did for going for his blue buff. He like let a whole minion wave under tower. We do not want to do that. But, and it's actually better that like he cleared the wave. And I'm pretty sure that was all six minions, right? So long story short, when you last hit minions, you get more gold. And since um, he cleared, like the probability of uh, one of his minions like stealing some of his last hits there is like pretty high. Versus when I don't have any minions at all, like he insta-cleared and gave me all six of my minions. I got the last hit on all of them, right? So, worth mentioning. It's like small little details like that. that aren't really that important, but they are worth mentioning, I think. I think we can definitely fight over this because he still doesn't even have his finished item. And he's also pretty weak, to be fair. But I think even if um he wasn't weak, he just can't fight over this because we have an item above him, right? So... We're gonna clear, go straight to the small camp and pray that it's up. It is not. We're gonna back up. We're gonna buy a health chalice. And honestly, I was thinking, I was thinking about uh, getting second item pestilence because it's so good into Alquan because he usually has a health chalice, he usually has a Bancrofts, and he has healing on his uh, passive. He has a literally a passive heal, right? But this guy went Chronos Pin at first item. He doesn't have a Bancroft. Now that doesn't say that doesn't mean that the uh, pestilence is bad. But maybe we just don't rush it. You know, we'll see. Oh, hopefully he does get some life steal though, because the pestilence is really good into Alquang for that reason. This matchup is very interesting. I've actually played this matchup a lot on both sides. I've won it a lot on both sides. But I truly do believe that. Um, Pele has a pretty fair advantage in this matchup. I've actually lost as Ah Um, Like I said, I've won and lost a fair amount on both sides, I'd say. And uh, if played if played correctly, I do think that Pele should just win. If played correctly. Wait, I don't want to drag this bad boy to lane a little bit. I kind of just realized I don't have beads, right? Which I don't think is the worst thing ever, but I do need to keep that in mind. He can't execute me. Definitely gonna go beat second relic. 
that much we know. Well, he doesn't have his... The problem is, like, if I ult him, it's not that, like, it would be the worst thing in the world, but if I ult him, since I don't have beads, he's just gonna ult me after the fact, and he's going to walk away. He's just gonna ult me and walk away. And I feel like I need my ult up way more than he needs his ult up, I guess. This is the best way I can explain it, so. I'll only ult him. Like, and also, him ulting me off doesn't guarantee that he escapes, but it does when he's, like, right next to tower, so. I'll probably, if I do ult him straight up, it'll be, like, um... It'll probably be when he's not next to the tower, obviously. Like, if he, went, if he were to invade my blue right here kind of thing, I could probably just kill him. I don't know what I want to do. If I want to go to the wave, go to the blue, or go to the small camp. Okay, he's he's in lane. But I don't. I want to. I want to cut him off and like steal as much farm as humanly possible, kind of thing. Let's Just get a proximity ward right there. Use it like as a normal ward, kind of thing. And then uh, I believe he's going to back, so I'm just going to start this bull demon up. We have we went uh, second item damage instead of defense, and we have a red buff, so. Shouldn't be that hard to do this. We want to just use our bull demon sustain a little bit. Also, we're waiting on cooldowns. Okay, maybe I shouldn't fight this actually. I don't know for a fact that I'll win that because he kind of like baited my horrific a little bit. Like I actually played that pretty poorly. I used my two and my horrific at the same time, so his one kind of got him out of both, which is really bad on my part. No way he's actually one HP, man. He's actually one. See, that's why I didn't want to force anything, is because I don't have the beads, right? The beads is such a big deal. Um That's okay though. I mean it's not the biggest of deals, like I mean, it is kind of a big deal. Like, we were going to snowball really hard right there. We were going to probably get the tower if we killed him. I mean, if, if we killed him, we were definitely going to get the tower. At least he didn't steal my blue buff. It could have been worse, actually. Could have been worse. We are going to go the Pestilence regardless, I think, because, yep, he's going he's going into a um, lifesteal, but also because the character just has inherent healing, right? So, And Pestilence is just very good on all-in characters. Especially if you don't need a lot of cooldown, which we don't need a lot of cooldown because we're probably going to go Yotens and Hydras at least. Probably going to go Arendite too this game because that character is a character that likes to kite and run away. And on top of that, it's also... Uh, oh wait, I should pick this up because... Eh, well, maybe I shouldn't because the red's spawning soon. But he also has a stealth character that has a stealth, right? So... His two is down, actually, so I believe we should just fight this. Alright, I believe wrong. We should not fight this because he has infinite cooldowns because he rushed full cooldown. Alright, we just gotta wait, I think. We just gotta wait until we have enough damage. Because this is, like, this is exactly what it feels like to play against, like, a King Arthur. Where it's, like... I can't really do much because I don't have the burst to kill him throughout and he gets to just spam cooldowns like we're in this like weird limbo middle ground or mid game where like I don't have enough damage to stop him from kiting me I guess so I should just farm and get enough damage wait hold on wait one second one second I'm not gonna I'm not going to edit out this pause because it'll be very quickly one second one second Okay, okay. I had to get up and do something. Close my door. Alright, we gotta focus up, baby. Focus up. Because I really do think we can win this matchup. It's just gotta be late game, man. Gotta get to late game. I mean, he did just dash. I thought we could do a little bit more there. I kind of misplayed a little bit. I don't 
Dang. I mean, it was worth a try, though. It was worth a try. I kind of, like, did that out of frustration, though, for being honest. I, I did that out of frustration. Well, the fact that he has shell is really good for us. This is rough, man. I'm going to get some high-tier characters today. You know, they're not, like, the best of... Not necessarily the best of players. But we are going to get some competitive matchups, for sure. Amaterasu and Al Kuang. And I don't think this guy's bad. I just think he's not amazing. You know what I mean? He's definitely better than like the average dual player I go against on a day to day basis, though. That's for sure. Alright, he procked my passive there, so I'm going to try to heal off the wave a little bit. Back up a little bit, a little bit. I think when I... Actually, never mind. I was going to say, I think when I lost this matchup as Kuang, I didn't have full cooldown like this guy's going, so maybe that's the secret tech. But now that I think about it, I think I did, actually. I think I did end up going uh, exactly what he built. I mean, I think I went like um, the movement speed breastplate, actually. And I didn't go it in this order. I got I get the Chronos Pendant later on in the game, but I lost it late game, so. I went the Typhons, which tells me he's gonna go even more lifesteal, which is great for us, because that gives us good value. Gives us good value on our um pestilence. Great. I could have also went shoguns and Brawlers, potentially, as like an alternative anti-heal option, but I'm comfortable with my decision here. I could ult him here, but, and maybe I should, but like, I don't have beads. He's just gonna peel me off kind of thing. I need to like space my horrific and my ult and my two. I can't use them all at the same time because he's just gonna kite me, right? Oh my god, dude, we actually played that so, like, over-aggressive almost, but I mean, that is kind of the Pele way, to be fair, she is an all-in character, but I think he could have just stood his ground and fought me and probably killed me, I don't know, because I did knock him up, he would have only got a couple, like, one or two autos off, would that have made the difference? I have no idea, maybe, it could have, it could have been the difference, I don't know, and him killing me there would have been big for him, because I had a power potion, and for a second there, I kind of thought he had a power pot too, maybe he did, but I don't know, I don't really want to hedge my bets on that i honestly don't know if he had a if he had a power pot or not but for a second i definitely thought he did okay so he didn't go he didn't go beads for my knock up or agus anything like that for my all in he is just trying to stand his ground and fight it was pretty interesting uh that means he is going to have to use his one to avoid my knock up like every time pretty much like he does not want to get hit by the knock up of course It looks like he is giving up the minion wave. All right, he kind of like used all of this his used all of his dragons on this. So not really sweating it. Maybe I don't need Aaron die just because. Maybe I don't need Aaron die because I'm pretty sure like the scepter finds him. But what, if he ever gets the tower, then the scepter's end and yeah. Okay, so that's the game, I think, right? Like, <laughs> he just simply allowed me to ult him and then catch up to him and then beads his ult. I mean, like, there's not a lot he could have done differently, to be fair. It's just positioning. He just shouldn't have been there to begin with. Like, that's honestly the only thing he could have done differently is he should never have been there. Wait, this is a game. What was I saying? We did get the Phoenix, though, which is big. And we get his little Chester, which is also big. Um, we're going to back here. I think we are just going to go straight into the Arendite, actually, instead of the Heartseeker like we did last time. We're going to go to the Arendite for more cooldown, of course, and also more movement speed. And I don't just mean on the ult. Like, the Arendite, of course, again, it gives you movement speed on the ult, but they actually nerfed that part. The item itself just gives inherent movement speed, which I'm being kited this entire game. He's trying to kite me, so. It's definitely not a terrible strategy. Okay. 
Okay. I understand what he was trying to do there. I, you know what, bro? Maybe I should have, uh, maybe I should let him have one more fight. Cause like, no, never mind. No, screw it. We're playing normal. We're playing normal. I just like, I know what he was trying to do. He didn't jump because he felt like the only way he could actually get out there is if he, um, is if he jumped over the wall. So he was trying to get over the wall, but unfortunately for him, he just didn't get there. He died right before he jumped over the wall. Kind of an anticlimactic, you know, uh, W there, but 14 minute W killing the Titan in 14 minutes is pretty good. Uh, especially when you're against a pretty decent player playing a pretty decent character, right? And it's just running around. So uh, I will go ahead and actually wait, let me check. I, want, I wanted to see, cause I didn't pay attention to his build there. Uh, after the Typhons, I wasn't paying attention, so I kind of want to see that before I skip you guys into the next game. Um, yep, just straight into Bancrofts, and uh, that that's plenty value for my uh, my Pestilence there. So GG to the boy. I'll skip you guys into the next game. Thank you so much for watching. All right, guys, we're on to the fourth and probably uh, probably final game, I'd say. The only way this wouldn't be the final, and maybe, maybe it still would, I don't know, but the only way this wouldn't be the final is if it was like a literal five minute game i don't know because i think we've uh got a pretty decent video duration so far i think oh i almost went transcendence man i almost started the transcendence you know chill out chill out chill out um and speaking of which by the way because i'm obviously i still haven't built transcendence in this video again transcendence start is fine you can start transcendence all you want it's just uh rushing the cooldown and uh whatnot it's just this gives Pele a much better early game, and she is kind of an early game character. That's not to say she can't frag out late game, because uh, she can. She scales very well into the late game, but the difference is, like, if you go Transcendence, you're hurting... Okay, let me put it this way. Like, if you go Transcendence, you're hurting your early game more than you would be hurting your late game if you didn't go Transcendence, I guess. Like, the gap is different. So, in my opinion... Ooh. But he doesn't have a wing shard, which is worth mentioning. But yet, the thing about it is, his character has a lot more HP 5 than mine does. Like, his 1 gives him so much HP 5. And he has literally 5 more potions than I do, so I actually do not want to fight. I don't want to trade poke, at least. Like, if we want to fight, it's going to be an all-in fight. After we clear the wave, like, maybe right here we'll, we'll uh, have, a, have a little battle. A little battle of sorts. kicked me into tower which was good on him because getting any poke on me is really big for him i feel like considering I, I don't have any potions yeah i can't i can't just force that unfortunately so i really do think i'm going to get out pressured in the end here where'd he go did he did he concede and go to blue Oh my god, that's so weird, bro. He could have got pressure on the red. I guess he thought that I could force it and I would I would kill it really quickly. But I most certainly would not have killed it that fast. Maybe if I had a wing shard or something. That's so crazy that he just gave me that pressure. Especially after starting way more potions than I did. He spent 250 more gold on potions than I did. And he's going the, the less early game start. So things are not looking good for him right now. Now, granted, I am a big advocate of transcendent start on Gilgamesh. I do love it. I think it's amazing. And if I were in this position, position when I was him, first of all, I would never have given up red. But I would still not count myself out. So I'm not going to count him out. But it is worth mentioning that he's in a, a worse spot now, for sure. I don't know why he's trying to fight me right now, considering he doesn't even have his item completed. And I do. Although I don't think he horrific me at the beginning. I could be wrong about that, but I feel like he still has horrific up. We can ult after him here when he jumps. And that's what we play Pele for, baby. Early game dominance, ladies and gentlemen. Early game dominance. Before he even got his first item finished, we're just in there like swimwear, baby. Hopefully he doesn't jump over this wall and kill me. He could. Okay, he doesn't even know I'm here. Or if he does know, he doesn't care that I'm here. To Dude, one of the strongest things about Pele, I swear, is just this movement speed. Especially when it comes to, like, just chasing down, like, chasing and getting kills. But she's really good at, like, running away. She's really good at PvEing. She's really good at chasing down kills as well. Like, this character is very annoying to go against. Especially if you're playing, like, a mage. Like, for example, one matchup that some people might think is, like, good or bad, whatever, depending. 
is like Morgan Le Fay. Some people might think that Morgan Le Fay beats Pele because she's considered to be like a melee counter or whatever. I'll let you guys know, I promise you, a good Pele. All right. A, yeah, a good Pele does not lose to a Morgan Le Fay. I promise you that. Uh, especially if you go this item right here. If you go Magi's Revenge, or whoops. If you go Magi's Revenge, you uh, the Pele just needs Blink, Magi's Revenge, and uh, Beads. Oop, that was close. It is beautiful. Wait, so this guy knows who I am. I always like getting recognized in the dual queues, like as a as a as a bit, uh, YouTuber, especially because like I've been a streamer for years, right? And I don't stream that much these days. Um, although I plan to stream a bit more uh, soon, I've just been focusing on YouTube and other things. But um, anyway, so what I was getting at is like I like it when people recognize me. It feels like I'm doing something right. But I especially like it when they recognize me as a as a YouTuber, you know, and not just like a a dual player or like. a a streamer like they see me as a youtuber and i think that's really cool it makes me feel good about myself man you know makes me feel like i'm doing something right Not under mm. definitely can kill him here depending on how he jumps Right, so that was an interesting play by him. I mean, I respect it. It was an aggressive play. He's trying his best, right? But um, one thing to note about that is he kind of jumped inwards and relied on his kick. He was kind of relying on his kick to save him there and like outpoke me and kick me into tower. But I can just ult the I can CC him in the kick, right? So I know which I already planned on ulting him the second he jumped. To be honest, like that was kind of my plan. But what I will say about that is like he can kick me after I ult, so it's a little bit a little bit of a questionable play depending on the situation. But right there he just used his jump and used his kick. Like he kinda just allowed Okay. He kinda just allowed me to uh do what I wanted. Alright, so apparently I'm a liar. I'm a liar about transcendence. I'm a liar about this being the last game. I guess I will end up queuing another one and playing another Pele game for you guys. <laughs> I'll go ahead and skip you guys into the next game. Thank you so much for watching. All right, guys, we're on to the fifth and actually the final game this time. Wait, my fan's on. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Let me turn it off. A little, a little AC unit fan thingy. A little bomber thingy majiggy. Um, we're going to take a Cullen. I'm not really sweating this matchup, if I'm being honest with you guys. If I'm being honest. I think what's going to happen in this game is I'm going to simply attack his character with my character. And he's going to simply crumble and fall over and die and then he's gonna surrender and then i'm gonna be like Great fight. thank you guys for watching and then end the video i think that's what's gonna happen here guys that is my number one prediction oh wait why does pele move like that when she's like sidestep when she's moving like diagonally hold up it's like she's got so much shoulder movement here right and then when you start moving diagonally it's like well i guess she still has shoulder movement she's just like shimmying Oh, hey, what's up, bro? You got any emotes? No? Minions have spawned. All right, so he went He went a pretty good start, too. Um, Transcendence is actually better on a Kukulun than people think it is uh, because it gives him, like, HP and whatnot. And, uh, and MP5, or mana gives him HP and MP5 gives him uh, HP5, right? So it's definitely not as bad as people think. And he went the wing shard horrific start. We should just simply out clear him though, and then beat his buns on the first wave as per usual. Just Pele things. Hmm. Maybe we shouldn't have used our one there to poke him more because honestly, let's be real, he's probably just gonna back regardless of whether I won him or not. And I could have had my one for this here buff. And then I would have had a one for this here next minion wave. So a little bit of a misplay, but no big deal. We did ensure that he backed by doing that. So hopefully he's not in lane and he goes to the blue buff because I would prefer to just be able to clear this up and back if, if possible so I can get my Jotuns finished. 
Also, I'd like to push that minion wave into tower as well. I'm pretty sure I used a different skin for every single game this, this video. I think I did. Let's go. Shoutouts to me. Being a great YouTuber. Helping out my, uh, my viewers. See different skins and understand which game's different than the other. I'll be honest, guys. Just a random thought that I had. Granted, I usually do get bored at the end of my recordings, you know, because it's, it's just at the end of a recording, you know? Like, I've been talking to myself for a while now kind of thing. But, like, it's more than that. I just am kind of bored with Duel, honestly, recently. And I, I truly do believe it's because of the bands. Maybe I'm coping. Yeah, I think we're going to end up giving him this meteor call today. It's not, it's not a big deal. Well, like, I don't know if anybody else feels like this, but is anybody else just kind of tired of uh, the permanent bands, guys? Anybody, like, I know like, a lot of people probably didn't even make it to this point of the video. You know, not everybody watches the entire video, but for the people who are here, are you guys tired of it, man? Because, I don't know, because, like, even if you're, like, a person who liked it at first and you loved it at first, I still feel like there's some people that probably did like the idea at first and now are bored with it and like there's some people that didn't like the idea and still don't like the idea you know i actually hated the idea but like came around to it a bit it was pretty fun for a while but i'm over it okay so he just uses my anger that is down you know what i'm just gonna try to fight this wave i think wait he's transforming now All right, he's getting poked down by minions. Oh, and he dashed into us. I'm gonna wait for him to use his... Never mind. I was gonna say I was gonna wait for him to use his CC and ult to horrific him, but then I kind of realized we're just destroying him, and I probably could have just held the horrific, honestly, but why get the thing if you're not gonna use the thing, you know? Smile. My thought process there. So we're just gonna beat him down, call it a day. All right, we're going to go straight back into the serrated second item. Why not? Why wouldn't we? It's too good, too powerful, too clean. But anyways, as I was saying, dude, like, I'm just so bored. Especially playing, like, really good gods. But then you could say, well, play bad gods and make it more of a challenge for yourself. Bro. Yeah, but losing on a character like Zeus may be more challenging, but that doesn't inherently make it more fun. Like, I don't like losing to to bad players that I shouldn't lose to normally because I pick a Zeus. Like, that's not more fun to me. So it's just like, I either lose, or, which isn't fun, or I spam these, like, OP characters in a meta where, like, all right, and also the game is just kind of dying a little bit because, like, the good players are leaving a little bit, kind of just waiting on Smite 2 and whatnot, you know? But I don't know. I don't know what the true reason is. I just know, long story short, Duel has been boring recently. Maybe it's because there's no competitive play also. There's no, like, tournaments and stuff. Because that's the reason why I've been playing so much Joust here recently. Which I haven't uploaded any of it to the channel. But maybe I will in the future. I don't know. I've been playing a lot of Joust because there's been tournaments after tournaments. And leagues after leagues. And it's been, like, a competitive thing, you know? And, like, the competitive drive is what... Is what drives me, you know? Like, the, the, the want to learn and improve is what drives me as a person. And I just kind of feel like, I don't know. I just kind of feel like I don't really have that competitive drive in Duel right now because first of all, there's no tournaments, no big tournaments at least. There's no tournaments, there's no leagues, and um, and there's no challenge, man. Like there's no nobody in these queues that's like good these days. I mean, there is a few people, but like it's really just rare to actually go against those players. You know what I mean? So. I don't know. That's my mini rant, just to say that Duel has been boring recently, to say the least. Hopefully, uh, some changes happen or something happens to spice it up again. Hopefully. As of right now, honestly, I've been having way more fun with Joust. It just feels like competitive and fun and feels like there's things to learn and stuff. Granted, because I'm like not as good as Joust as I am Duel, right? So, of course, that's going to happen to a certain degree, like, because there's more to learn, because I'm worse at it. But, like, I, I truly do just believe it's because there's a competitive scene, and there's, like, actual try-hard games that are actually, like, try-hard and hard to win. Whereas, like, me, like, in these games, like, I just queue up. You guys see, like, I pretty much, when I do a video on a character, I pretty much just show you guys every single game I play, give or take. 
pretty much to show you guys everything. So you see what it's like on a day-to-day -day basis when I record. And um, to say the least, it's just not that competitive, I don't know. Wait, he has mystical mail? I actually played that pretty bad, to be honest, in the sense of, um, I think if I, if this were truly like a competitive match or matchup or, you know, player matchup, whatever, if this truly were more competitive, um, I should use my ult to counter his ult. Like when he goes to knock me up, I should uh, CC immune that with my ult and that would, uh, do a much better result, I think. But on top of that, second relic, what do I want? I feel like I just go like Sunder and just kill this guy now. We'll, we'll just get thorns. Why not? It's easier to use. Smile. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I should definitely CC me in his ult. But on top of that, it's also more than that. Oh no! Hopefully, I didn't give him that red buff. That would suck. Um, but also I d I don't have defense yet, and he does have defense. So generally speaking, defense is gonna out trade no defense. Obviously, I'm really far ahead, so that's why it didn't matter. But. I should have defense by now. I should have already went the Berserkers. I'm just kind of greeting slash trying to snowball this game as hard as I can. But, like, again, I probably should have just simply went uh, Berserkers third. Like I normally do, and then get the Hydras next. Wait, he jumped. Ult me, ult me, ult me, ult me, ult me, ult me. Yeah, I think his ult was still down, I guess. I mean, he doesn't have any CDR, and I have 30%. I think I had, like, 25% from Tier 2 Hydras. The uh, last time we fought, I'm pretty sure. But that's just one of the cooldown diffs, to be fair. That is a cooldown diff. Wait, do I stick this? Okay, I, I'll, that was like the worst thorns I've ever done in my life. That was straight up just a panic thorns. I used it because it gives you 15% mitigation, by the way, for those who don't know. Because you don't remember, like, you just remember old thorns. Maybe you haven't played Smite in a while. But this Thorns gives you 15% mitigation, which is really strong. But the reason why I was such a bad Thorns is because I didn't need to use it. And also because um, I didn't even, I don't even think a Phoenix uh, Phoenix shot actually hit me when I used it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I used it and it didn't mitigate literally anything, but whatever, man. We're just snowballing with Pele. We're just running it down, calling it a day. We're just running it down. Who needs a Thorns, man? Thorns is useless anyways. Another reason why I really didn't want to die there is because I have a power potion, so I did not want to waste the 500. He's doing even more defense. I kind of just want to see him try to clear the fire minion wave, to be honest. I feel like that'd be kind of comical. Not to say he can't do it, because he can. It's just, I feel like it would take him a little while with this build. I mean, I guess he's got mystical mail to clear a bit. He thought I was AFK. Oh, I should have ulted that. Oh, he transformed into a werewolf. OMG. Alright, he dashed away. We're gonna ult on top of him. Beat him down. Oh, he popped the, the mitigation thorns. How much did that just do to me? 302 damage, hopefully. Holy moly. I actually think I am just gonna back here. I don't think he'll be able to clear that wave fast enough, or he's, I don't think he'll ignore the wave to the point of which I don't get that meteor. And I want to be healthy for when this red buff spawns, which it either spawn like right now or it's going to spawn like a minute or two. I'm not sure because I don't have the timer, but regardless of whether it's up right this moment or whether it'll be up in a second, it is going to be here very soon. So we're setting up for that. Could very well just be up right now. We got the proximity ward because if he ever leaves his base, the proximity ward's slow value is going to be insane. And we got the red buff. That's big. He did leave his base. We have ult in 10 seconds. Gonna charge up to him here. See what we can force. Oh my god. Okay. I kind of, I knew better than to do that. I'll be honest. I'm just trying to get out of this game as fast as possible. I knew better to, than to do that. I was hoping, I was hoping and praying that he would jump my ult, like, the same time, and then I would just catch him, like, after he jumped. That was my goal. But obviously, he just kind of waited patiently, right? 
called it a day. There, theoretically, should be no way that he can catch me here. If I just press my three and then I, if I knock him up and three away. And I also have the proximity ward at my feet kind of strat as well. So I think we're big chilling here. Um, I am going to go... Actually, I'm going to get this Yotens. Because, like, what if he does get me low enough? Like, granted, a lot of these fights, he's not even fighting me. But some of them, he does fight me for a minute and then decide to run away. And if he fights me for a minute and then runs away, I get the Yotens Vigor. Uh, movement speed, which could be really big here. Movement speed is the name of the game, ladies and gentlemen. Also, it's just a lot of sustain as well, so... Can't be that bad. I am going to go Heartseeker next instead of Erendite because I'm less concerned about chasing him. Although, I have been chasing him pretty poorly in some of these engagements. I'm less concerned about my chase potential as I am just the amount of damage I do. Like, he's a double defense character. I need more pen. He's a double defense warrior. I need pen. I need big boy damage here. So we're going Heartseeker. Yeah, the Jotun's Vigor actually came in really big right there. We got a pretty big amount of healing. That's not to say that we would have lost it without the Jotun's. We probably would not have. But it is worth mentioning that the Jotun's did go pretty hard there. Tremble. Put down the proximity ward. And that's GG. Killing the Titan in 13 minutes, man. That's just the Pele diff. What can I say? Um, before this video ends... <clears throat> before this video ends, as per usual, I am going to show you guys some builds. Although you guys did kind of see me get to late game. Um, but I just want to show like a couple of variations. Not much, honestly. Uh, I pretty much would build about the same build every single game. But there is a little bit of um, leniency towards it here. Um, also, just, just to show you guys really quickly, again, I didn't skip any Pele games. I showed you guys literally everything. I just queued up on Pele, played the game, man. But look look at all this Joust I've been playing, man. Well, not all, Okay, this doesn't do it justice, but I've been playing so much Joust. <laughs> we love Joust, man. And for those who don't even know, because a lot of you guys just see me as a dual main, look at this. 2.5k Conquest, 1.2k Arena. Um, 7.8 thousand casual joust, 2.8 thousand siege, 8.7 thousand dual ranked, uh, 2.5k joust ranked, uh, 1.9k ranked conk. So like, I am not just a dual player, but as you can see here, it is nowadays anyways, it didn't used to be, but nowadays it is my most played mode, right? So anyways, back to what I was saying, which, what was that actually? Uh, I wanted to go to Pele. And just quickly throw my build on here and just throw a couple build suggestions as well. Um, let me tab out so you guys don't have to hear Pele making noise in the background. Okay, there we go. I muted my game. All right, so boom. Uh, alternative start. You can alternative start. You can go transcendence. It'd be perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with it. But uh, you're definitely better off just going this build. You also can go defense second if you want as well, but I think it's you're better off just trying to get yourself serrated. It does give you utility and it does give you some defensive utility with the lifesteal and the movement speed, right? So it's not all aggression, but yeah, like I said, you can go defense second if you want. Uh, honorable mentions, or not honorable mentions, but if you're against a magical character, you either go shoguns for big boy attack speed, or you can go pestilence. You can even go Talisman of Energy, double defense if you want. It's entirely up to you. But one thing I'm going to put here is honorable mention. This isn't. This is not a Pele thing. It's kind of an every god thing. If you're against like an Apollo or like a Morgan Lefay, and you think you're going to get a lot of value out of this here proc, because like against certain hunters, you can actually argue that you just go Magi's instead of beads, and then go Horrific Thorns or Blink Thorns or Blink Horrific, and not have beads at all, and just use this as your immunity for a big all-in finds, more strategic play. So definitely something you can build like as like a fifth or fifth or sixth item. Always keep that in mind. But most of the time, you're just going to go Berserkers or Shoguns, I would say. And then right here, you can go, honestly, whatever you want. But I, I usually lean towards the Hydras. It gives you some mana sustain. It gives you more cooldown. Um, I'd say this is pretty much your core build. After this, you can really just do what you want, man. If you need anti-heal real bad, get yourself a Brawlers online, man. If you, uh, like, Brawlers is going to be your biggest anti-heal option, of course, outside of maybe Pestilence against certain magical characters like Anubis and Al Kuang and maybe, like, a Lifesteal Freya. Uh, your biggest possible damage spike in this situation is Heartseeker. Like, you can go boom, boom, and that's just your build. 
or you can go, if you don't need anti-heal, you can go Heartseeker. Uh, your biggest utility slash damage spike is going to be uh, your Erendite, so you could opt to go Erendite and then Brawlers, or if you still didn't need anti-heal, you could go Erendite into Heartseeker, that'd be perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, I'd say most of the time my build would probably look like Boom Boom, or it would probably look like Boom Boom. Uh, actually, I don't know. It really does change, but these three items are very solid. It just depends on what you need in the situation. But if you need anti-heal, then uh, it's probably just like this. The, you definitely don't need the air and die every game. It's kind of situational. It depends on how good they are at kiting. It depends if they have a stealth or not. It depends on, you know, a lot of different things, right? Um, but another situational item is, of course, going to be your oboe. Oboe is a great item for ending the game. Just uh, hitting the Titan and having the electric uh, shocky boys go back and forth. Very solid item for ending the game does hurt your DPS in the actual fight, but some matches, let's be real, you don't need any more DPS, so you just want to get out of that game and end kill a Titan as fast as possible, so you get yourself an Oboe. The last honorable mention I think I'll put on here, actually last two, is if you're really feeling spicy, you're bored, right? You could go one of these crit options, or even both of them for that matter. You could go Boomerang. She does have a lot of auto attack damage with this build. She does do a lot of damage. You could go literally double crit here, you could go Brawler's Deathbringer and just rely on hearts or uh, crit procs, or I mean Hydra's procs to crit, right? And that this could be very good as well. I think this is a very good option. I just think it's obviously much less consistent than just building like this. Typically, you don't really need crit on Pele to kill your opponent. You're just gonna smelt them like an iron ingot, regardless. You know, you're just gonna you're just gonna destroy them. You don't really need crit, but it is worth mentioning. That um, Hydra's auto canceling with Deathbringer could be good, or just getting the boomerang and then boxing them with your ult. One thing I will say about the boomerang that's very, 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 very strong is when you're, for whatever reason, you're in a matchup where they just keep getting away from you in your ult combos. Like for for one reason or another, you just can't kill them with your ult. You just can't. You even try to Erendite. It's just not working. Boomerang makes it to where Pele is a really good boxer. I mean, she's still pretty good, but. Boomerang makes you rely on your ult less. Like, say if you're ulting and they pop their ult, they pop their relics, you pop your relics, and now you're stalemating. You didn't get a kill, you're stalemating. The, the boomerang helps you with those, like, situations where both people have their ults and relics down and you're fighting. The boomerang can come in clutch and do, like, a ton of damage, right? But, again, like I said, this is what I would build most of the time, or something like this. Most of the time. Nine times out of ten. Uh, but I'm just giving you guys some honorable mentions. I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.